Well, that has seen better days. Not a lot left in that. <coughs> so, this back wing topper is in for a new drive coupler. Splines aren't too clever on there. Customer is not bothered about that at the moment. All they want is that machining off and a new one welding onto that sprocket. So, we have undone the four bolts to hold the gearbox on, slid the gearbox forwards because the sprockets only have a little pilot hole in the back, so you can't slide the sprocket and the collar all the way up to slide the other one off and have enough gap in the middle. So the easiest option was to undo the four bolts and take that off. We're now going to take this to the lathe. We'll probably put it in the outside external drawer truck and machine it off. Then put a small um, centre in it, so a slight recess just to keep that centre. And then we can get it in and get it hopefully welded up. There's the old collar cut off, so I used a parting tool to put a groove in it. Just gone through it with a grinder because it's probably better to do it with a grinder, and that's taken care of that. There's no risk of that breaking the parting tool because we need that for the next job. So this is what I've been doing. I've made a recess in the sprocket. I've turned the sprocket around now because you can see how much wears on it. So I give it another lease of life. I have trued up this coupler and I've faced it off to get rid of the taper so it sits into the recess better. It's just a standard 540 inch and 3 8 six blind coupler. And with that being a good fit in there now, what we can do, oop, what we can do now is take it to the vice, put it in the vice, squeeze it together. We know it's going to be pretty concentric. It's going to be true in terms of any runout, and then we can weld it together in the vice. So we are at the moment just waiting for our electric glue specialist to return. And once he's back, we can get him splodging some liquid metal electric glue on there. Got the new part pressed into the sprocket now. So there we can see. Nice tight fit. So hopefully that will keep everything where it needs to be. And as soon as that's welded on, we should be able to then refit it back to the machine. But I've had a little test of the splines from the collar on the machine and it's not looking very good for the machine, I'm afraid. Tell me what you think of this. The metal wear on here makes it look like the splines are bent. Whether they are or not, I'm not sure. I haven't put a straight edge across yet, but I've made a collar now, so it comes up here onto the spline that hasn't been used. So that needs a good cleaning up, and hopefully that will fit. But ideally, it needs a new clutch plate and spline on there. So whether that gets machined off and a new spline welded on, I'm not sure. We've got Top Dog, Topper Dog, Bella Bobs. Supervising as always. Bella! In you get cap slag. Use a cap slag. Use a cap slag. Mm. Cut him. Wee. So yeah, uh, once that's welded on, then we'll see what they want to do about the um, PTO clutch spline. Whether they want that changing or what they're going to do with that. So this is the part of the clutch mechanism. So the coupler and the sprocket drive in here, drive to the clutch plate, and then the springs and bolts which put clamping pressure on. So I've cut that off now. I've got an old 1000 spline to 540 spline PTO adapter. I've cut that off now, so that is going to be the new one to go on there. We just need to make the length correct now, <clears throat> machine out the old Part of that from in here because it's been welded on the inside as well and then um, I'm not sure whether that's going to fit in there or not but it's a bit loose in there so we'll get a good measurement on that make that a nice tight fit when we're machining that out and then we'll keep it all concentric face it off nice and flat and then we should be ready to start welding 
and here's what the electric glue specialist has done with this. So that's nice and perpendicular now, that's the correct length that we need. I've also, uh, that's the side of the sprocket now, as you can see the teeth are rolled over. So I've machined the other side, so now it gives the sprocket a second lease of life for us. And that will save buying a new sprocket at the moment. So I'm going to get on, I'm going to machine this now, work out what I'm doing with that. Um, unfortunately where the locking pin goes, could do with that not being there, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. So I've marked up with a pen the length of the collar, so if I like cut it there and had it there, button up against that, then I've got all this to go through, so I can do that or I might see what's left. But the problem is, I'd like to have a drive collar on this side and that side of the locking pin slots. So I think I'm probably just going to have to machine that out to the diameter of the engine free apes and go with that, unless I can get that pushed through from the back. But we'll see what we can do. Well, I must say the tyre fitter made fitting them new tyres look a lot easier than I did. So these are Maxam Agri Extra. They're 480 65 24s. They have quite a thin lug on them at the moment, but when that wears down, it'll get progressively wider. So we are going to give these a go and see how they go. Now, whether they're going to be good, bad or what, I don't know, but they are a lot better than what was on it. So yeah, they are, you know, you look at the width of the tread there and you compare it to the width of what's on the Continentals in this bit. So it's a thicker lug, but like I say, the, um, as you wear down the lug, the lug gets wider anyway. But at least I have grip. I now have some weight as well. So I'm excited to see what they're like. So stay tuned and see what happens. You can't beat a new set of tyres for a tractor to make it looking good. I think it looks quite aggressive now. What do you reckon? Use the fly press now just to push the shaft into the clutch housing plate. So what we're going to do is put a ring of weld around there now. And put it back in the lathe and then we'll machine the rust off the back and put a ring of weld on the back. The shaft's now welded onto the pressure plate, front side, back side, put it back in the lathe, we now skim this perpendicular to the shaft, so that's all correct. This is now ready for the clutch plates to go on, so clutch plate and then... Um, that can go in. Another clutch plate and the cover plate. <clears throat> that just bolts back up on there now, whichever way it lines up. Like so. So we get that bolted back up, get it fitted back on the machine, set the spring length, and we should be somewhere near ready then for assembly. Gone in there quite deep, but in there it's yeah, but now we can measure 
how much was left there, how much is left there, make it longer to... Make, that can be... That can be at least five to ten... At least five, five to ten mil longer, can't yeah. it? I wouldn't want to be good 15 mil, it's 15 mil... There, there, there could be time. another five mil on that as well. Think, mm, no, no, because you look how no. far it's gone into that. But we measured the depth for that, we measured... It's back, it's broken, it's not happy. So, that was the PTO adapter, which we thought was going to be a bit soft. This was the four-wheel drive collar, which that has now mudded the end of. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a PTO spline out of an old gearbox, which will be a lot harder. Weld the new shaft collar onto that and go again. So we can see that obviously there wasn't full engagement there, which we can now correct a bit more. Um, so we're going to make that. 10 mil longer to match that so that I'll engage on there properly and I think we can make that probably 5 mil longer into there because it doesn't show signs of all the wear in there either and <clears throat> yeah a rework but we had two days mowing out of it and we didn't know that was soft so we're going to put it right so we can go again tomorrow so it's the same thing again grind it off machine it back Machine a step on there, knock it in. Same with that, put a recess in there, push that in, weld it back up. And yeah, let's try again. That is in for a new gear in the transfer box because it's lost drive. So Robert T's getting on with that. And I'm gonna crack on with this. Reworks, never fun, never any money involved. On a positive note, there's never any money involved. It's always money going out. So, yeah. You take the good and the bad. We have our replacement shaft made and it's going to get pressed in now to the clutch plate. By hand, not with a fly press. Fly press makes things easy. It's supposed to make it look easy, actually. You made it look effortless. If you'd have made machining it look as effortless as that, we'd be happy people. That's um, gone through further than the last one. You, you, can, you can push it out a little bit if you want to. Yeah, yeah right. I had to machine a little bit more off it in the length of the shoulder so that to get it squared up so it's sitting flat. That's got a nice... The last one you've done that so tight it could just pick out. Now it's... You're slacking. Slacking? Yeah, the last one you did was prettier than that. It's got, it has got a recess. It is, it is centralised. <laughs> when, 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 when I machined it out... Yeah. yeah, a small washer came out from the old collar. Oh yeah. I, I was machining it and then a small thin washer came out like a shim. I was like, oh, it's machined out to the size. Well, I think I can safely say I have machined that off. Good job, Lisa. Beginner's luck, weren't it? Maybe I've like taken heed of your what you're playing about at it's agricultural, there's nothing to be fancy about. Would you like me to knurl it so it's tight? <laughs> Leaning down on the job. Yeah. Huh, cool. I've not got on very well with this clutch freaking transfer gear project job. What have you been doing? I don't know. I can't literally but with the every time <laughs> Every time I come in you're not here. Where have you been hiding? Here. Where? Been working. Where? Here. Where's here? But you wasn't there a minute ago.
that comes down fast. Playing. Why are you, are you doing any welding on it? I weld a puller to my gear to get the gear out. Oh, I see. It's the cheaper way of doing it. Yes. You've dropped that, Robert. The viewers will tell you where it is. It's okay. The viewers know where it is. She's on it. Show the viewers your skills. Had a bit of glue. Looks nice, doesn't it? What are we doing this side now? Just welding it in. Yeah, you made it blue. going to cope with the horsepower of the green thing. Mm. Green power? Green power is it? Well the last one did, the last weld survived. Yeah. Just the rest of it was a bit mm, cheapish. That doesn't sound very nice. Successful gluing? I hope so. Uh, we can wait. And this is what it looks like when it's fully assembled. So we have the sprocket here, the female drive collar there, clutch pressure plate here, and the male shaft welded in there. So that takes the drive from the splitter gearbox to the individual gearboxes. So there's one up there, the middle one here, and one on this wing. 
and that shaft and that female coupling is what failed so yeah with the new shaft out of the gearbox it has lasted a lot longer so yeah we're really happy that the shaft out of the gearbox is a lot harder than the Pichot adapter and with that we can call this job complete thanks for watching